What's up, guys? It's Steve. I am here with Ivan Mula from Burundi. Ivan, what's up? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. So I met this guy. Actually, uh, I had I was here earlier this year, and I had a meetup uh, with different creatives in the Buja scene, and he was one of the guys in the room. There was about, about 30 people. And, um, yeah, like, the rest is history actually ran into you as i was waiting for a bus right yes yeah yes. and you were walking and then you know just saw you on like uh you know circle riders um with carry the love talking about what you guys were gonna do i was in Nairobi at that point mm -hmm. and i was like i gotta come to this okay. because i was like what this is happening in my own country you know mm -hmm. so i remember coming and of course everyone was like you gotta meet this young man you know of course like when I first met you, you know, you don't know what people do. Like yeah. I'm, I grew up in the States. I grew up in, you know, Kenya. Like, I went away. So coming back to my own homeland, like, I don't know who's who, like, even who's making moves, different things like that. So, you know, I just like to get to meet you, get to hear some of your story. I was like, I got to get this guy on a podcast, one, to hear his story and his vision for 11 Culture. And then also I wanted to know, yeah, like, what are you doing? What's your vision? Where are you going? And so so that even, like, some of our communities, you know, my community can hear about you and even support the work that you're doing here, you know? So, yeah, Arvin, like, tell me, like, who are you? Like, what drives you? You know, when you look at yourself, when you look at what you're doing, who has inspired you? Who got you to this place? That's a good question. I think that's, it's a simple question at the same time hard. You're saying, who are you? Right, like, right. who am I? <laughs> um man i am just loved by god mm -hmm. i love by god i will start there okay. because i think my life started with um i was born in 90 something mm -hmm. but then my life started in 20 2010 because okay. that's when i got saved i got born again and that's where i could say i really know who i am because now i knew who i was in god who i was in christ yeah and um man i grew up in, in an environment where we we loved music Buyenzi. Well, I think you've heard about Buenzi, yes. Bujumbura, Burundi. Uh, it's more like a hood where we well, there's music, uh, there's a uh, football, mm. uh, soccer. So I think the U people from the U.S. say soccer. Right. Um. So yeah, I was a mixture of all the, all that those stuff, but I didn't know who I was. So I started doing music while I was a teenager, right. and also dance. But then still, I was confused. But then when I got saved, mm. I think you really know and understand when you get saved is like you're getting a new identity. Right. Um. Of in terms of like understanding and seeing yourself in a new way in God's right. eyes. So that's where I started my journey. But uh, music, uh, dance, art didn't leave me. You know, that was my experience when I was a child. So it grew up with me. So I started, you know, doing events. But I was not in the events world. Right. Um. So I in 2013 I met Je Jeff Baluku. Yeah. Uh, in CLM, which is uh where I serve now. Um. Um. As a youth. Uh. Uh, intern somehow that's what we say uh -huh. so i met him in 2013 and he was just i was just passing by um that time i was now i was i was just passing by i didn't know a church i would, could go to i was saved mm -hmm. was in a church before but i in, in, i was transitioning from the church i was in so mm -hmm. i was looking into a church i was like god tell me which church they go to um so i made this uh this man who was just sitting around with these young guys okay and they just you know talking and i knew these young guys he was sitting with they're right. just you know guys who i know they're smoking they're all doing this stuff. i'm like what is this guy right i heard these guys are pastor. i'm like okay okay i didn't enjoy but i was like hmm let me mm. see so i sat with him <laughs> um he was just you know talking about music not right like um about you know god he was like talking music and he was inspiring them right um then later we, i met like maybe a few weeks i met with him in a concert and i was playing bass okay. as a musician so we connected then uh, we met with him, so it's a journey of being him being a, a mentor to me. Right. And mentored me into the events world. Man, it was a very uh, good journey. So since 2014, I was with him, working with him in terms of like events, mm -hmm. um, you know, under him, learning about wha how he's doing. He's a Ugandan coming from Uganda to Burundi as a missionary. Right. And this guy is just cr a crazy guy because you know Burundian you know how we are sometimes you're just quiet you get what I mean right but this guy from Uganda comes with this vibe right you know yeah and he's coming into the Christian community with all this vibe and he's like with people are like who are you 
Right. And you are a pastor with all this vibe. You're dancing. You're a pastor. Right. And he was bringing some music or stuff. So that's where I, um, I was in learning under him, learning, seeing, obser- ob- observing. Um, yeah. So I learned, uh, we did different events, uh, him, you know, doing campus vibe. I was learning from campus vibe, from scratch. So he's doing campus tours. So um, what is campus vibe for those who don't know what campus vibe? So campus vibe is an event that happens uh, for university students. Okay. So what we do is like we gather them in one space mm-hmm. and we um, most mostly like inspire them into right. their careers. Um, you know, we talk about, real, we'll talk, you know, real issues. You right. know, and then we bring salvation and say, hey, even though you want to be successful into this career, right. hey, you cannot do it unless you're born again. Right. Yeah, so that's how we we we've been doing it, and so we did even he did even uh campus tours we go to campus com- campuses, preach the gospel, but also uh for a country like Burundi when we've been uh, going into civil wars, uh multiple multiple so we we had this challenge of like you're saying yeah people who are talented, right, but they don't know the future they were like we don't even know what's going to happen because you know once a war happens sometimes people don't dream. You get right. what I mean? Well, they stop on. dreaming. No, that's real. That's yeah, real. They stop dreaming. So, Kamaza will just give them, you know, dream like, hey, there's people in Burundi who are, who are, make, who are making it, who are doing it. Right. So, we bring them into the campuses. Right. They say, hey, these people, they can only do it because they believed in Christ. Wow. And that was the reality. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, I learned from him. We did, um, so I did other events. So, now I didn't only work with him, work with different people like Big Zoe, one of the biggest artists in Burundi, a gospel artist. I worked under another guy called Seth Mbonihangu, yeah? He's okay. one of the best sound engineer in Burundi. And he was one of the first guys to, like, do, um, let me use this word, a festival in Burundi uh, okay. in 2012. Yeah. So that time, I was in high school. Right. So I, I didn't even know him. So we met later on in 2015, 16, and then we started connecting with him. So I grew up under all these guys, musical, musical, uh, learning about music with the, the other guys, events, so now it was more like God showing me, hey, all this stuff that you've been learning in your childhood, you can use them now in my kingdom. So music, wow. um, um, events organizing, um, video. Right. So now I started from that. So yeah, and the rest is, is history. Yeah, so like for you, so you said Jeff Baluku, your salvation experience, like who led you to the Lord? Like, So other than Jeff Baluku and some of these other ones you've met through him, who are other influences people who have like inspired the way you think mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. even as you start even in culture which has led you to you know to clm and, mm-hmm. and the things you're doing right now like mm-hmm. who who are the people which books you know what influencers mm-hmm. have influenced you um apart the one i said uh pastor baluku uh said um big zoe as i said yeah uh, there's another guy who really introduced me to music called uh Giogasa Janga. he's one of the best musicians in burundi mm. uh his best md also but i will say um so i i, I became a dj in 2014 yeah uh, yes I, I did djing before uh in 2011 10 yeah but now when i got saved i didn't do it because i didn't know mm. i was like this stuff is not christian because <laughs> right. I used to do it in, you know, when you're going to, into parties and everything, I was like, this stuff, you know, Christian. So I gave myself this time to, um, I didn't even give myself time. I just stopped. Right. But, so now, now I started doing DJing because I was seeing young people coming together. And they wanted uh, uh, to dance. Right. And they wouldn't dance. They would dance in a, in a good way, decent right. way. But I would like, these guys need music. They need to hear this music and they need to dance. Because right. now having, uh, seeing Uganda, you're seeing Kenya. Kenya was booming because, you know, seeing Kubamba. Yeah. And what they were doing, you're like, what is this? So now, I started doing DJing. Mm. But whoever could go and play music, I could sense that, um, hey, um, we're playing this music and it's gospel music. People are not smoking, drinking, or, you know, a- doing ABCD stuff, right. you know? But why people don't accept this? Why people don't easily, uh, why people still doing what they're doing? Why still going to parties and nightclubs? Right. You get what I mean? I was like, what is this? <laughs> you know, um, we're playing the gospel music and music that helps them, but what can they stay in here right. and get saved? So I had these theological questions, you know, with mm. the art I was I was doing, and th- that like led me to like a book like uh, Pop Culture by Steve Turner. Okay. Um, and another one by Andy Crouch, Culture Making. Yeah. Um, I heard that from uh, Lecrae's song when he was talking about you know how he changed, how he saw the world and everything. So God 
culture making from the song. I was like, okay, I need to get these books. So right. let me give you a story they didn't know. So uh-huh. I didn't have cash to buy those books. Yeah. So I got some cash because I was also I'm also an MC. Right. I got like great good good money. Uh-huh. And that time I was a DJing, I was a DJ and I didn't have my own laptop. Okay. So that's another story. So I spent like five years without having my own laptop as a DJ. Wow. So what I will do, I will put music into a flash disk. Yeah. So then later I upgraded, I, I bought a hard drive. Mm-hmm. So what I would do is like, if I go to a, to an event, yeah. I'll say who has a laptop around because I had my machine like the um, controller. Right. You know, I'll say who has a laptop here and is available. I'll just put on the software yeah. and just do the work. That time I had an opportunity to buy my own laptop. But I was like, laptop or, because I had these questions like, my laptop, I will have it, but I don't know what I'm going to do with this laptop because right. I need to get a- answers for these questions, theological questions. I'm like, hey, why don't people don't understand this? Yeah, it's more like, when you look at this, it's more like, um, you may say, oh, these are baby questions for a Christian. Yeah. You get what I mean? It's like, the answer is favored. The answer is the world doesn't accept us. But I was like, no, I need to understand, you know, why, why? So, so it led me to get those two, the po- two books. I got them. And whenever I tell people that I got those, uh, the, how much I got those two books, they were like, are you crazy? <laughs> well, it, was, it was good cash. So I got the two books shipped in Burundi. And when I got the books, man, I started seeing stuff in new ways. So mm. that's why I was like, because I was um, criticizing things around me. I was like, oh, look at these people. Look at that. Look at the music they're making. And I was uh, consuming the music. So right. when the crush say, talks about, you know, uh, there's um, people say, are oh, we going to change the culture? And he say, you won't change the culture. People say sometimes we want to transform the culture. Say you won't transform the culture. The only way to change it or transform it, you have to create more cultures. Mm. You know, you don't have to to change that one. And he, he, there's a, there's another concept talks, talking about the good, the bad, the ugly. I don't know if you heard about that. Yeah, yeah. No, no, the good, the bad, and the irredeemable. Okay. You know, so it's it was more like those those concept theological concept. I was like, man, um, so I. I was introduced to culture makings, like how do we re- recover our creative calling right. as Christians? Right. We don't have to criticize the culture. We don't have to consume only the culture. Right. But what if we create culture? Right. What, if, what if we cr- create the culture of the righteous? Right. You know? So that gave uh, birth to uh, more of like, oh, we need young people who can embrace that right. you know? right. um, and, and start creating cultures. Right. Um, not any kind of cultures, because when you go to, go to Burundi, when you go to India, when you go to the US, there's a culture in there. There's a how people think, there's, a, there's beliefs, people right. react in how people do stuff. I was like, right. how do we as Christians, you know, introduce and create cultures that mm. influence, mm. you know, the world? So that's where even 11 culture came in. 11 culture uh, came in into that, but also with uh, what happened in Burundi in 2015, we had like civ- civil unrest. And I was looking at the people, people we were working with. Many of them were, you know, were in the streets, you know, they were, um, you know, trying to kill each other. You get what I mean? You're like, oh, I, I thought you were Christian. You get what I mean? I thought we, we, we viewed everything to a biblical point of view, not right. a human or Burundian point of view. Right. And then I was like, man, we are in this time where we need to have a discipleship, you know, a grounded discipleship for young people. Right. And how do we do that? We have to do that with introducing the culture of the righteous. So it came from Proverbs 11, 11. That says, from the mouth of the righteous, a city is exalted. From mm. the mouth of the wicked, it's destroyed. I said, hey, if you're the righteous, well, you know, we should exalt this city that rather than, you know, putting bring it, it down, down, bringing it down. So that's where it started growing and having like a crew of DJs, young people, and, you know, more, more like connecting through art and music. You're like, right. hey, let's, let's do this. Let's connect and let's grow together. Wow. Yes. That's I love story. that. No, man. Like, so as we recap, as we close this uh, session, like, uh, let's say someone right now is listening to this and they're a leader and they're looking at the same things, right? Mm-hmm. They're a youth leader. Mm-hmm. They're in the urban communities. They're in Nairobi. They're in Kigali. They're in Bujumbura. And they're listening to you. And they're asking the same questions. We're not making impact, right? They're looking mm. at their youth. We're not making impact in the culture. What is like a few tips, like one, two, three things that you would say, where do they start? Is it reading books? Is it, well, what are three things you could give the listener who's hungry, like you're hungry, yeah. that led you to this place as we close this uh, session? I would say, first of all, it's, it's um, 
first of all, we need to understand what is the impact. There's okay. impact in how the world sees impact. And sometimes I think when we are doing ministry, with, we, we measure, you know, the success of ministry, like how people in the world measures the success of their organizations. That right. shouldn't be the case uh, for us. Uh, for example, the organization may say, hey, we're going to want quantity. We want people to, like people will come to your youth gathering, like hey, say a thousand people. That's, that's a success, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes um, you do an event and you expect um, a thousand and you find 10 people. Mm. <laughs> and now that's where you have to understand what is success? What is the main thing? Because um, I will tell them this one, this one. As you grow in understanding your shape, uh, how God made you, and one of the parts of the shape that I love is like uh, the experiences God have met, um, you, you've gone through like with God, like the pain. Those are the number one indication of how you can minister to your young people in your area. Because God didn't, you didn't go through those pain and e experiences for no reason. Right. That's the first step. The second step, I will say this one: uh, learn how to, um, to really understand the pain of your people. Because what happens, like we assume as we are ministering to people, we and especially for young people, yeah, we assume that they have the same issues. Mm. Theologically, let me say they have the same issues. It's sin. But the pain, they have different how they have different, different ways on how um they, they, they are they are living out. So we yeah. need to really to be able to understand the pain. And and now when you understand really the pain, you can diagnose um the real medicine. Right. The real medicine is still Christ. Right. But the way now you how you do it, for example, I will say, someone was saying, um, sometimes when we we seen people, young people struggling with depression. Uh, and anxiety and we thought the solution was to bring them entertainment mm. then we're doing wrong because you brought parties they end up being depressed and un anxious but the real solution was to tell them hey you will face it but with christ yeah the, the real solution was to let them face the trials because right. when they face the trials with christ they right. learn and the character grows so i think when you know the problem you can still bring christ but how you bring him is different you get mm -hmm. so I'll say the second one, the last one, prayer. Pray, man. Yeah. Prayer is key because prayer is not like you are going is, is a means, but it's more like prayer is uh, a position where you get empowered by the Holy Spirit to know the timing, mm. how, mm. with who, mm. you know, yeah, and what. Yeah. What I've said, yes, is one of the uh, the, the tips, but I'll say the Holy Spirit is key. Right, you know, so on. that's the come main on. thing I would say. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your experiences on yeah. how you can use them and also how you can see the real issues into your youth you are you're ministering to. Yep. Wow. Irving, thank you so much. That was so life giving and uh yeah, I'm sure we'll have you back again for another session. Thank you for everything. And yeah, I'm excited for the next session. I really wanna hear more about eleven culture and Circle Riders and Kubamba and how you guys, you know, came together to create this amazing festival that happened here and so many people got touched. So, yeah, we'll see you next time, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs>